Hello friends, this video on microorganisms friend and foe part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us see how microbes play an important role in the baking industry. So have you ever observed that if you take some maida, that is flour, and you add I mean, the, normally the way you do, you prepare a dough, you try to prepare a dough, all you do is just add a small amount of yeast to that dough. So this is how you prepare the dough and leave it for a couple of hours, maybe some two to three hours. And after two to three hours, you will see that the dough actually rises like this. So what helps the dough to get fluffy or what is the rising agent which you have added to this dough. So this rising, rising agent is nothing but the yeast. So yeast acts as the rising agent and what is yeast? Yeast is an example of a fungi. So basically microorganisms help you to act as rising agent and that's how it helps to bake a lot of items. So let us see how it does. So yeast is used as a raising agent in baking and in baking you cannot do it without a raising agent. You would have seen like when you prepare a cake or when you look at the bread, so it, it is very fluffy. So, so inside the, it is not very solid. So gaps are created in between and that's how it has been made very fluffy. So in order to make that fluffy you need a raising agent and that raising agent is yeast. And that's how you prepare cakes, muffins and all these bakery items. So the most common yeast which is used for baking purposes is Saccharomyces cerevisiae. So this is the most commonly used yeast. So let us see how yeast helps in break, baking. Now what yeast does is it converts the carbon di carbohydrates in the dough into carbon dioxide. So this is the conversion that takes place. So carbohydrate is present in the dough because the dough is made up of flour. So flour has carbohydrates. So these carbohydrates get converted into carbon dioxide. Now what happens due to the formation of carbon dioxide? Due to carbon dioxide, the dough expand or the dough rise and it form bubbles. So carbon dioxide which is a gas it leads to the formation of bubbles and that is why you will see that when you leave this dough for a long time and after that when you see it you, you will see first of all it has it is raised and also there are bubble like structures tiny bubble like structures which is formed due to the formation of carbon dioxide. Now once the dough is baked, for example, you prepare the dough, you leave it for some time and then you bake it. Now once you have baked it, what happens to the yeast? Because yeast is a living organism. So the yeast dies once it is baked. Now the re what is the result? The result is that the dough is already expanded. So there are bubbles in the dough. So once it, ba it is baked, it becomes very soft and spongy and the yeast dies. So the yeast kind of sacrifices its life to prepare that cake for you. So soft and spongy baked product is formed. Now many a times if you look at the recipe of a cake or any other bakery item like bread, you will see that use of eggs and sugar, either good amount of sugar or eggs are used because these substances accelerate the growth of yeast. They, promote, they favor more and more growth of yeast. So you have more amount of yeast, so you get more fluffier cake. So the baking is better when you have more yeasts. So now in a very similar way, not only for cakes, in bread making also, similar type of uh, process happens. So initially aerobic respiration takes place. Like how exactly this conversion happens? For this conversion to take place, aerobic respiration takes place. That means the yeast, that is the fungi, they undergo aerobic respiration that is in presence of oxygen. So they utilize oxygen and they give out carbon dioxide. So as a result of this aerobic respiration, what happens? Carbon dioxide and water, they are formed. So in this process, what happens? Oxygen is used up. Oxygen will be used up and carbon dioxide and water will be formed. Due to the formation of this carbon dioxide, the rising happens or the expansion of the dough happens. Now. Now what happens when all the oxygen has been used up by the yeast? Once all the oxygen is used up, then anaerobic respiration happens. That is fermentation takes place. 
Now, when all oxygen is being used up, in that case, an aerobic respiration will take place, and as a result, in this case, ethanol will be formed. So let us not get into the, all these details because I mean you will be studying about all these in your higher classes. So for now you should understand that yeast it converts carbohydrates into carbon dioxide and the process which helps in this conversion is the aerobic respiration that is oxidation in presence of oxygen. Now this carbon dioxide rises the dough or it helps to expand the dough or it helps in the bubble formation now once the cake is baked the yeast dies and due to the carbon dioxide a soft and spongy baked product is formed so now let us look at the dough making process for various other food items like idli and dosa now you would have had these as your favorite breakfast items when you have idli or dosa. So how do you prepare them? So for this also you would have seen that your mother prepares the dough and leaves it overnight. Leaves it to get fermented. So what happens here? So in this case also there is a bacteria called lactic acid bacteria which ferment the idli or dosa batter. Because in this batter you do not use any yeast neither you use any curd so you really don't have anything which can act as i mean act as a rising agent so what is being used here so here the microorganism which play an important role is the lactic acid bacteria so where is this bacteria present now how do you prepare the dough for idli or dosa so for that purpose you use rice paste as well as a specific type of pulse called the urad dal now these bacteria that is lactic acid bacteria they are naturally present in the urad seeds and these this is the specific type of dal which you use to prepare idli or dosa so now due to the presence of this type of bacteria when you leave the batter for quite some time then these bacteria will lead to the formation of carbon dioxide so as a result of the, what is the process in which carbon dioxide will be formed the process is called fermentation so fermentation happens in absence of oxygen and the result is that carbon dioxide will be formed along with lactic acid so carbon dioxide and lactic acid will be formed due to the formation of lactic acid it gives a slightly sour taste so formation of acid will give a sour taste. So if you see the idli batter or the dosa batter has slightly a sour taste. So this that is due to the formation of the lactic acid. And due to the formation of carbon dioxide, it, 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 it again, the dough again rises. So that formation of bubble happens due to this formation of carbon dioxide. Now you would have observed that if idli batter or the dosa batter is fermented for a very very long time, like instead of a couple of hours, if you leave it for a couple of days or so, what happens then the batter becomes too sour. Now it becomes too sour due to accumulation of too much lactic acid because the longer the duration, the more is the formation of lactic acid and more is the formation of lactic acid, more is the sour taste so gradually it will turn to sour therefore the batter should be fermented only for a limited period of time in this case if you see for during the dough preparation you do not need to add any starter here so you neither need to add yeast you don't need to add any other thing because the bacteria is naturally present in the urad seeds now these kind of examples can also be seen in other food items preparation for example the bhature which we prepare when we prepare chole bhature or the naan which we prepare where the kneaded dough is kept aside for some time for arising so that the process of fermentation can take place so in more, many of them we add baking powder and so many of them we add baking soda in some of them we add yeast powder so in, in preparing different things we add different types of uh, agent which can make uh, the fermentation successful now you would have seen that some people use baking powder some people use baking soda some use yeast so why do we use different different uh, uh, things or different different agents for the same process that's because each of them have its own as advantages and disadvantages 
For example, if you talk about baking powder, so baking powder can be stored for a very long period of time. So baking powder or baking soda, they can be good alternatives to yeast. They also function as yeast, that is they can act as raising agent. Now, keeping or preserving yeast for a very long period of time is not a I mean, good decision, good option, because they do not last for a very long time. So that means baking powder, baking soda are good alternatives to yeast. So this is how in our household items we see that microorganisms play an important role. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.